schools when you graduate you become licensed um, and the National Midwifery Institute was working towards that credential in the state of California and I joined I, I, I called my dad actually I was like dad I you never had to pay for college for me so can you help me out and he paid for half and um, and I just and I went to school so it was a three-year program it took me five years I had small children um, I there's a certain portion of it that was homework, book work, that I would do correspondence with the um, instructor in Vermont. And then the other portion of it was apprenticeship. So I had um, three years, I think, apprenticeship with um, a local um, group of two certified nurse midwives who were doing home birth here in Santa Cruz. and. I probably attended something around 100 or 150 births as a student, as an apprentice, um, as a doula, as um, assisting other midwives before I became licensed. I've been a home birth midwife for uh, closing in on 14 years now. Um, and I have been all over the Bay Area doing births anywhere within an hour radius of my own home. My philosophy on birth centers, it might not be the same as every birth center, but I really want it to feel like a home birth. I want it to be a home birth in someone else's house. Um, some of the reasons people have chosen to birth here might be that they live with their in-laws, they don't have enough space, um, which which is interesting because I don't care how much space there is, but they do. So it feels better to them. Um, they might be um, having a, um, a slightly higher risk uh, and wanting to live to be closer to the hospital. If, for instance, uh, uh, someone who's planning a vaginal birth after a previous C-section, um, sometimes if they live way up in the mountains, they feel safer being closer to the hospital and they birth here. Um, because it's five minutes instead of 45 minutes. Um, so it's a way for people to have also that continuity of care uh, that you get with a whole birth. You get that here too, where I, I am on call for all of my clients and um, they don't have to um, take the midwife or the doctor who's on call at the hospital. It used to be that the guideline was to be within a half an hour of the hospital, but some of the new research that I've been seeing is that um, that as long as there's someone who is trained in how to help, um, that being even an hour away from the hospital doesn't pose any greater risk. If you know, if you have someone there who can. Um, manage the complications, but also foresee the complications and get you moving in the right direction if you need to. So doctors are um, trained in emergencies. They're, they're surgeons. They're really great at what they do, and they handle high-risk pregnancies. Um, in my own opinion, I believe that every low-risk woman should be seen by a midwife, either where, wherever they're most comfortable giving birth, whether that's the hospital, whether that's home, whether that's the birth center. Uh, the visit length, statistically on average, is seven minutes face-to-face -face with the doctor. So you get an hour face-to-face -face with me. We get to know each other. I care about how your cat is feeling or whether your aunt is, you know, coming to town. I have time to get to know you and 
answer all of your questions and take um, take the time to really be present with you. And then also, in addition to that, do the medical care. So we're doing blood pressure and we're listening to the baby's heartbeat. And mental health is a is a big part of what we do. Um, I think it's a big part of, of giving birth. I think it's really important to address um, address all of the hurts that we've had growing up or the fears that we have becoming a mother, um, becoming a parent, um, in order to fully surrender to the process. You have to deal with the parts of you that are difficult in order to move through them, in order to give birth, in order to become a parent uh, without pain medication. They call it the midwife's epidural. Of course, it still is uncomfortable to have a baby, but the pain, the, the water is really, um, it takes away a lot of it. It helps, uh, physically it helps relax people, but also many Many people are conditioned to relax in the tub. You have a hard day, you get into the bath. You have a hard birth, you get into the bath. One of the reasons I became a midwife was um, because I have this idea that if children are brought into the world in a peaceful way with dim lights and no talking, you know, minimal amount of talking in the room, and um, and they are just brought into the world with love and light and um, adoration, that it's a, the best way to begin. And peace on earth, you know, begins with birth, not that cliche statement, but it's true. Um, if I could rule the world, I would, I would have it so that women, uh, trusted birth again, believed in themselves. They didn't think, you know, I, I love the use of epidural when it's needed, but I, I wish that um, it wasn't culturally normal for, for all the interventions. You know, I wish that people could plan C-sections if they had a known complication, but that it was for the most part reserved as a last resort. Um, you know, I wish that no one would ever, you know, break a woman's water for their own convenience or, you know, to speed things up because we're, we're waiting, you know, on her and it's taking too long. Um, I just want, I just want birth to be normal and beautiful and sacred. A message that I've been Kind of portraying more through when I meet families for the first time is this idea that um, as a midwife I acknowledge that my presence at, at a birth is an intervention. Um, I know that a lot of times we hear that word intervention and we think of it as a negative, um, but it's not. I'm invited, I'm asked for, I'm welcomed, um, but I I, um, I'm not going to save people from the experience of birth. Um, I'm just there as a guide, and um, the less that I do, the better the birth is. The doula is, her job is um, typically as a hands-on massage, um, comfort measure to help ease and relax birthing experience for the mother, but it's not her job um, to uh, do anything medical. So the, my job as a midwife is um, first and foremost in the, the medical care for the mother and the baby. Um, and then that comfort measure aspect comes next. When people come into care with me depends on when they discover that what either um, some people know they want a midwife from before they're pregnant and some people um, have hired me when they're in labor right so 
there's 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 all of that. It, it depends on when they discover that what they're doing isn't working, or maybe they already know about it and they start and they start with me from the beginning. Um, but um, often there's an interview um, process, and I always recommend to people they mid what they interview maybe three midwives or so um, just to get a feel for who it is that they want to build a relationship with. Which midwife do they connect with and they want to get to know better and they want to invite that midwife to get to know them. And um, um, at 36 or 37 weeks, uh, we start seeing each other weekly. Um, some midwives do plan a home visit at that 36, 37 week time. Not everybody does. Um, I do, and so I go to the house, I see where the house is, I help make sure that I know where all of their supplies are going to be. Um, I bring a tub if they want that, uh, an affordable birth tub um, at that time. Um, or at the birth center at that visit, I'll have people bring in their family members who, if they, if they have people they're inviting to the birth or their doula, so that and my assistant, so they get to meet them, and we also then have the whole team together, so we kind of get a feel for the vibe of all of the different personalities of who's going to be in the room. And then I'm with somebody throughout active labor. When they're ready for me to be with them, I come, and then I may do some in and out of the room. I might not necessarily be in the room the entire labor from then on, but I am present with them as much as they want or they need me to be. Um, and then typically after the baby is born, uh, once mom and baby are stable and we're sure everybody is healthy and we've done a full newborn exam and we weighed the baby and um, um, everyone's happy and healthy, we can tuck them into bed and, and say our goodbyes. And that's typically, I would say on average, about three or four after the birth. In the postpartum time, um, you know, typical for a, for a hospital might be um, that they're there for their day or two and then they're discharged and then the baby gets some checkups but the mama isn't typically seen again for about six weeks. Um, and there's a lot that can be missed in that and then I think that Home birth and birth center midwives are doing more frequent visits. There's three visits within the first week for most people, um, and we're we're doing breastfeeding help, and we're um, we're looking at mood disturbances. We're able to partly um, because we're trained in in what to look for, but also because we have gotten to know the family so deeply, we can recognize when something's off. Um, and help them get um, have someone to talk to if that's all it takes and sometimes it's referring them for more help if they need to see somebody who's a specialist. 